SimSmith version 11.5 introduces a new circuit element called the matching element. Its purpose is to provide an automatic way to tune an ELM network to perform an impedance matching function. Here's what it looks like. The matching element can be run either in manual or automatic mode. Only the automatic mode will be described here. The purpose of the matching element is to transform the impedance seen on the left to the impedance specified by the element. So for example, it should match 25 ohms to 50 ohms, regardless of what's over here. It will match to 50 ohms. The target impedance can be specified exactly by setting the R and X values in the element. So for example, we want to match the input to 100 ohms minus 50 ohms of reactants. We see that here's 100 ohms, 50 ohms, a negative of reactants, and as I change the input load, the F and H parameters, the values of the inductor and capacitor, change to make the match match. If the R and X values are both zero, the target impedance is assumed to be that specified by the generator's Z0 parameter. So if I set this to zero, set this impedance to be 75, the matching network matches to 75. If I change this back to 50, now it's matching to 50. The element can be either a high pass or a low pass, it's controlled by this parameter here. If I set it to be high pass, it sets it to be a capacitor inductor. If I set it to be low pass, it's an inductor and a capacitor. And the input element to the matching network can be either shunt or series. The choice is dictated by the required impedance transformation and is made automatically by SimSmith. Notice what happens if I increase the input impedance beyond the matching. The topology should change. Notice how the topology changed when I went through 50 ohms. If I back this off, you can see the capacitor switching back and forth automatically as necessary. If the target frequency is set to zero, then the matching element will adjust L and C as necessary to make the match at any frequency. So for example, if I set this back to 25 ohms, I'm matching to 50 ohms, and I change the frequency, you'll notice that the F and H parameters are being changed so as to make the match happen at any frequency I happen to be analyzing. If the frequency of the matching element is not zero, the match L and C values will be set for the given frequency and the values will not change as the frequency of analysis changes. So if I set this back to 10, now as I change this frequency, the L and C values don't change because they're adjusted specifically for this frequency. If I change this frequency, they will change value so that the match always takes place at exactly 12 megahertz. So here the match is not happening correctly because I'm not at the right frequency. I set the right frequency, the match is being made, frequency up, frequency down, this impedance is changing because the L and C values are set for a match of 12 megahertz. The matching element allows the user to adjust independent circuit elements while knowing that the circuit will be matched at a specific frequency. So for example, I set this to match at 10. I can now go add a feed line 
and I can adjust the length of this feed line for other purposes, other concerns in the network, knowing that the matching stub or the matching network will always be adjusting itself to provide the appropriate match. So if I change this significantly, watch this network, it will change topology. There it changed topology because now the input impedance needs to be raised instead of lowered. Notice that the resulting sweep is not always a single point. That's because, again, this match is happening at exactly 10 megahertz. If I change this to match at any frequency, the sweep becomes, well, boring. It may be easier to understand the operation of the L element by watching it operate interactively. If I change the display format to path, we can see how the element performs. I can use drag tune to drag the load around. Let me get rid of this coax. Now I can pick up the load. and move it around. And notice that if I move to the other side here, the topology will change. I can also tune the target impedance, but you'll notice that if I try to click drag on this, it won't move around. And that's because the R and X values have been set to zero, and the impedance is specified by the GZ0 parameter. In order to drag tune the target, I have to be providing the target impedance, so I can put in just about anything here. And now, since I'm specifying the target impedance, I can drag tune the target impedance around, just like I could the source. You'll see that the L network changes its topology as necessary to make the match. The matching element can be used to model many of the automatic antenna tuners available on the market today. It should be used when designing systems where the impedance of the transmitter should be taken into account. For an example of how the L element can be used, watch the Understanding the Pi L Network video. I hope this proves useful and thanks for watching.